hearing to order. Um, my name is Sarah Hulak. I'm one of the attorneys here at the Nebraska Department of Education. We're here for provo proposed revisions of Title 92 Nebraska Administrative Code, Chapter 91, regulations governing driver qualifications and operational procedures for pupil transportation vehicles. Um, today is Friday, November 16th, 2018. It is 9 a.m. The legal notice of this hearing was published in the Omaha World Herald on October 15th, 2018. I will now read the guidelines for the testimony. Um, and if I hadn't already said this, we are in the State Board uh, meeting room at the Nebraska Department of Education, uh, sixth floor in Lincoln, Nebraska. A Nebraska Department of Education staff member, member Bryce Wilson, will describe and explain the proposed rule. Uh, this will be followed by any testimony by interested persons. Each person presenting written or oral testimony is requested to state a concise suggestion or recommendation of what action you would like the board to take. State the rationale or reason for your recommendation. You may reinforce, but please refrain from repeating previous testimony. Each person testifying will be limited to five minutes. If additional time is needed, it may be provided at the discretion of myself, the presiding officer. At the conclusion of all testimony from interested persons, Mr. Wilson will have the opportunity to respond to the testimony presented today, and then that will conclude the testimony. The testimony presented will be recorded and the audio recording will be made available to the State Board of Education and the public via YouTube at the time the State Board considers the adoption of this rule, which would be December 7th, 2018. All written testimony must be submitted to the hearing official prior to the end of today at 5 p.m. in order to be made part of the record for the hearing. Uh, Mr. Wilson, will you please provide a description and explanation of the proposed rule? Sure. So, Bryce Wilson, uh, Administrator of Finance and Administrative Services. Um, revising Rule 91 was a collaborative process with the Department of Ed personnel, a revision committee representing superintendents from small to mid-sized districts, transportation directors from large districts, level instructors, school bus vendors, and the Nebraska Safety Center. Rule 91 addresses driver qualifications in the operation of pupil transportation vehicles. This is the second hearing for Rule 91 as we revised the first version to address several concerns communicated during the first hearing. The committee covered several aspects of safe transportation of students, but a major focus was to incorporate 2018 legislation into Rule 91. LB 42 increased the age of a child from <coughs> 6 to 8 that must be seated in a federally approved child passenger restraint system, and LB 347 eliminated school bus permits. A major goal of this revision is to streamline the process for a pupil transportation driver to become qualified. Proposed changes include eliminating DMV's role in issuing school bus permits and only requiring physicals every two years instead of annually as currently required. Additionally, level one training would be reduced from 11 hours to three hours for pupil transportation drivers of small vehicles that do not control traffic. Other proposed changes in Rule 91 include requirements for schools to provide the following, a minimum of two hours in-service training each year for all drivers of pupil transportation vehicles. The topics must include emergency evacuations, student loading and unloading process, student management, vehicle inspections, and the local school safe pupil transportation plan. Other changes include pre-trip inspection required for all vehicles and must be completed for each trip com compared to what is currently in rule as once a day under the under uh, under the current rule. Clarification that emergency evacuations must be conducted by the school bus drivers. Um, also added is drivers must pull over the vehicle to make a phone call on a cell phone. Currently, only texting was addressed in Rule 91. Uh, the school school safe pupil transportation plans must provide direction to a driver on how to address unattended items on or near the pupil transportation vehicle. Uh, clarifies that explosive devices cannot be transported on the vehicle. Also uh, incorporates a requirement that schools must develop a policy to confirm a driver's ability to conduct daily tasks and emergency evacuations, um, kind of a functional capacity. And, the motor, and we also addressed the definition of motor coach, um, which was revised to include the following, um, a minimum gross vehicle weight of 33,000 pounds, um, a requirement that the vehicle be made with, with a semi-monocoque slash monocoque unitized body construction um, and is designed to seat at least 32 passengers. We also removed the front door only requirement so that rear 
doors could be allowed on those vehicles as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, would anyone wanting to provide testimony please approach and fill out the information request on the registration sheet? Good morning. Uh, my name is Dean Carroll. I'm a general manager for Mid States School Bus out of Wayne, Nebraska. I'm here to ask that no changes to Rule 91, Section 002.04, be made concerning the definition of a motor coach. It has been stated in the past testimony that motor coach transportation has been one of the most robust forms of transportation for activities in the state of Nebraska. Uh, no one can argue that. Students, coaches, drivers are so much more comfortable in this type of bus versus a standard yellow bus. It has also been stated that only until recently dealers have respected the intent of the definition of a motor coach. The reason for this, uh, this new type of shuttle coach has only been available in the past couple of years. It was engineered and designed to replicate the motor coach, but at a much more reasonable price. Notice I did not say cheaper because it could be construed to mean that this shuttle coach is substandard construction to, in comparison to a motor coach. Testimony has also stated the body structure needs to change to unitized construction and not body on frame. There are thousands of students transported daily in body on frame yellow and white school buses. I have not heard one testimony why shuttle coach is not a viable option for student transportation, just that you need to change the definition. I did hear that a member of the rules committee has suggested the terminology change because it was his interpretation. I might add that part of his business is selling coach buses. With a shuttle coach price comparably to a 10-year-old motor coach with over half a million miles, one can see why you'd want this change. This week was a state school board conference and there are many schools interested in purchasing these type of shuttle coaches. With a recent vote of accepting Initiative 427 and the state coming up with an additional $100 million, school budgets are only going to get tighter with state aid becoming less. Just like a 10-year-old car, these 10-year-old motor coaches will nickel and dime you, except the motor coaches by the thousands of dollars and that's just simply not money schools can afford. More recently talking with a superintendent, he spent over $80,000 in repairs on his motor coach in a 12 month period. Another superintendent will not be replacing her motor coach with another used one, but instead will opt for a yellow school <coughs> bus. Both of these schools could have purchased a subtle coach with the factory warranty and not worry about the motor coach will make it back from the game. There are many schools that I've talked to who are not happy with the current motor coach situation. It is a running joke at these schools on whether or not the bus will make it back home after a game or field trip. I'm sure that there are some schools that are happy with their coaches, but they also spent two or three times the money on that particular bus. These shuttle coaches are allowed to transport college students, uh, but yet not students for any school districts in the state of Nebraska. There are large transportation companies similar to Aero and Navigator who utilize these buses to transport children, adults, and seniors and yet we want to make them non-accessible to schools. Because of this, I'm asking the Board of Education to not make any changes to the definition of a, of a coach bus or add a shuttle coach as a viable option along with a coach bus. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to testify? Uh, my name is Mick Anderson. I'm the director of the Nebraska Safety Center, and I'm here today to, in support of the Rule 91 as the revisions were presented today. Uh, we provide uh, the safety training for all the drivers uh, uh, and instructors throughout the state, and um, also part of the Rules Revision Committee, and feel that with the changes made, this will allow uh, to provide safe uh, operating of the, of the buses and still continue to make sure that the drivers are uh, properly trained and can transport our students uh, throughout the state in a, in a safe manner. So. Thank you, Mr. 
Is there any additional testimony? Seeing none, I will close this. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Wilson, do you have any rebuttal or any other information you want to provide? Okay. Then with that, I will close the hearing. Thank you, everyone, for attending.